It was sent to a top advisor. A month ago, I said he's got to quote that book without giving me credit. I don't give a damn about credit because the enemy is really within. And thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for being my loyal listeners. Many of you saw on Twitter tonight that the enemy within, big book, 2005. If you're there, I would welcome your comments uh, later on. I'm starting a beautiful dish tonight. I got very hot oil. Uh, can you hear me now? <laughs> can you hear me now? Because I got my pasta cooking. Look at this. I got a new pasta pot. There we go. Built-in colander where you don't need a colander for it. Let me turn the heat up now. Get that water boiling. And tonight I'm going to make... Uh, how's the sound? Good? All good? What a rally. What a rally. I was, I was inspired tonight by Elon Musk. I was inspired by... Kennedy, I was inspired by uh, Melania, I was inspired by the president. I, I, you know, we're not alone. That's the thing to remember. We are not alone. We are America. We are America. And those left-wing bastards, I hope to God they are vanquished and destroyed and put to, well, just vanquished and destroyed. I don't know how much more we can take. Dr. Phil came over, whoever cares about him. So tonight, I'm making... My favorite dish, of course, you know me, I'm addicted to pasta. So I'm making pasta with incredible, these huge Argentinian red shrimp. If you're Jewish, I apologize, but uh, not really. Huge, huge scallops, gorgeous. And I'm cooking them from frozen without defrosting with a technique I learned just last week from someone, great chef, where you can cook them without the defro defrosting's a mess because what happens is they lose their flavor. I have to do something now with my my pasta water. See, she's beautiful now. See, she's beautiful. Everything's sensual for me. Everything, writing, reading, it's all sensual. Dogs. So I got the oil very hot. Now I've told you the trick before to cooking from frozen. Everyone knows how to cook shrimp. Everyone knows how to cook scallops, but not from frozen. What you do is you marinate them in some sauce, olive oil first, so they're coated. If you throw them in uncoated, they're going to splatter. This will splatter a little, but it won't matter that much because they'll come right back. There we go. Oh, that's a beautiful sound. Ah, oh, that's a beautiful sound. Chef Savage is happy again. Because I watched the great rally, and now I'm going to make a great dinner. Look at that, right? Now, what I'm going to do immediately is lower the heat a little bit. But i got to put in my stuff. I'm going to put in all of my stuff. I'm going to put in my garlic. Very important that we put Oh, you got to see the picture. Oh, you want to see me in my silly hat. Put in the garlic. You put in your garlic. You're going to put in... I have shallots, not onions, because the, the onions are a little too strong. I like shallots. I found organic scallops the other day in Safeway, of all places. Safeway happens to have a great organic section. I found organic shallots. Unbelievable. I like them. They're so sweet. Okay, so we got onion. I mean, no, no I'm going to put in, instead of parsley, which I don't like with seafood, I love this stuff. Look at this beautiful green stuff, right? Maybe I'll cook for Donald Trump at Mar-a-Lago one of these days. Him and his buddies. Who knows what the future may bring? We don't know. We don't know. It's a long way to victory. It's not about me, nor whether I cook for him or not. All I know is it was a beautiful night to watch that rally tonight. He's very subdued now. He's no longer his uh, hot self. He's his cool self, which is much better. That could get the middle of the rotors that we need. Now, here's something I'm not certain I want to cook with my pasta, with my shrimp. It may throw the flavor off. If you're a professional chef, you probably know more than me. Uh, uh, mushrooms, okay. Now, I'm not 100% sure. They're beautiful. These are organic shiitake mushrooms. I'm going to use them anyway. 
because I'm frugal and I bought them and I cut them up, I'm gonna use them. It's that simple. They're no good, I'll find out soon enough. But to counteract the sweetness of the mushrooms, I'm going to do something very simple, which is the organic red pepper flakes, which are great in general, but you don't want to overdo it, just a little bit, that's all. But you don't even taste them. Food is about balancing, you know. So we got those going. The queen is cooking here in the new pasta pot. Notice I replaced my, my pasta pot. I was gonna auction off my old pasta pot, I swear to you, it was funny. I thought what fun that would be for the Healing Wheel Society. Just auction off the pasta pot for someone who'd like a pot I cooked in for 20 years. But I think the stainless steel might be going on it, you know. So I treated myself to a new pasta pot. Look at this. It's got a built-in colander. Don't you love it? It's a little tricky to use, to be honest, but you don't have to put it in a separate pan. I love pasta, everything about it. I love everything about pasta. So we're going to turn them again. Actually, the first time we're turning them. The first time, not again. And look at those beautiful ingredients. Look at that. Mm. It's cilantro, the greens I use, by the way. Not parsley. I, I grow parsley in my garden. I grow all different herbs. But I'm going to cook these with cilantro, which is a remarkably different flavor. How are we doing? Can you hear me now? Well, he's asking where the red sauce is, which is a funny question because I haven't even put it in yet. I may decide to drown it all in red sauce, but probably not. I'm probably going to take my pasta from here when it's cooked, uh, not al dente, almost cooked, and put it in here and mix it up in this sauce, which is basically a sauce without a red sauce. But I won't enjoy it as much as if I just pour a sauce on it. I love red sauce. I mean, I told you I could eat red sauce on red sauce. I love my lycopene. I'm a tomato lover. So I may, I'll have to see, or I may just use it on this basis right here. And uh, did you like the rally? I loved it. And I want to go back again to the fact that President Trump is using my title again. I love it. The enemy within. Boy, was that ever ahead of its time. It was, uh, you know, when it was published by me, I mean, not by me, by the publisher. It was published. I hate to say it because, you know, it's like TikTok, man. There we go. You know, you go forward and backward, it's over. Uh, 2000 and, wow, 2003, God, that's a long time ago, 03. And I was quoting Cicero, ancient Roman historian and legislator, writing about the enemy within, which has since become very important in our country because we are unfortunately being destroyed from the enemy within or by the enemy within. And uh, I'm glad that we finally have a candidate who might be president again, I hope so, who understands this. And I don't need, the, I don't need him to say, and Michael Savage, you wrote it in 03, that's fine, you know it, those of you who bought it. I've been around a long time, you know, it's good. It's nice, we'll see if he wins again, what happens. A you know, long way to victory, a long, long way, man, there's gonna be some battles ahead. And God forbid he should lose, and we get this fraud this creation of the swamp, this invention that destroyed everything she touched. You know, I had sent them, I have a contact within the campaign. About two weeks ago, I said, he's got to tell everyone what she has done in her lifetime. Forget his vice president. When she was DA, that's when homelessness exploded in San Francisco. I don't care if you're a liberal, you know it's true. She turned on the police and told them to keep hands off the filthy scumbags in the streets. That is when homelessness took off in the city. It's when she was DA. And then a man was killed in front of his wife with his two sons by an MS-13 member. The mother was crying. Italian man went into the wrong neighborhood. He was, uh, the husband was shot in front of her eyes and her two sons. One son survived and she survived. And, uh, the widow begged Kamala to give this piece of shit the death penalty, pardon me, and Kamala refused. She was already bending the knee to those who put her in power. And then an officer, a few years later, was killed, shot down, killed Officer Espinosa, Hispanic man, by a gang member. The widow cried and begged Kamala to impose the death penalty. She would not do it. 
She's a terrible human being. But she was rewarded for being a terrible DA by being injected into the U.S. Senate while she was AG for eight years, excuse me, Attorney General, where she knows she did not take on transnational gangs. She inf inflicted transnational gangs upon the state of California, too. Then she was U.S. Senator where she did more damage. So she has a track record. It's not good. It's very bad. And Trump really has not emphasized that enough. I'll have to emphasize that to him in the coming few days. He should tell people what she's actually done. I see these Waltz Harris signs all over with these Halloween schmucks. And I feel like shaking these neighbors and saying, hey, moron, when Trump was president, there was no war. There was no inflation. There was less crime. You can't talk to them. They're like brainwashed friggin' zombies. Well, let me just say this to you. This shrimp, you see it in the pan here? See my beautiful shrimp here, my scallops? This shrimp has more integrity than Kamala Harris. This scallop has more integrity than Joe Biden and the entire Democrat Party, especially the way I cook them. That's why I cook, because I see reality. I ask people, why do you like to watch me cook? I have a few people I speak with, some friends. I said, they love watching me cook. And I said, why do you like watching me cook? They said, I don't know. I know why. It's like having a relative that no longer existed, exists. A guy who gets up there, you know, cooks, talks, lays it on the line while cooking, like a relative that we don't have anymore, like the uncle we don't have, like the father that's dead. You know what I'm saying? So that's my role right now. For however long God gives me breath, I will do this. I will do this. I'm going to use, I'm going to just taste it before I decide whether to drown it in red sauce. Taste it with me. I, well, you should see me tasting without burning my, my mouth. Wait, you got to see the chef taste it. The Sono Bono thing. Okay, I'm going to taste it without burning my mouth. It's not bad, but I wouldn't say it's what I want over, with my pasta. You want to hear something funny? So this week... I said, I'm going to cut out the pasta, so I was making my dishes. I started to put it on a bed of spinach instead. I don't really like spinach. I got pains in my knees that I never had. And I couldn't remember what I had done. Is it the red pepper? Is it the this? Is it the shrimp? Then it dawned on me. I said, Michael, you're a PhD in nutrition. Spinach promotes these reactions in your joints. It provokes gout in people. It's one of the most gout-provoking foods of all. It help, forces the body to produce uric acid. I said, because the purines in spinach. So I said, what the hell were you doing? What were you thinking? So I decided, you know what? I'm going back to my pasta, which I've loved. I never get sick from it. I love it. To some, I overcook it. To me, I cook it just right. But these are done, I tell you right now. See these beautiful things? Well, you're looking at me. I'm not the beautiful thing. Look. Man, they're looking good. Look how nice they look. What I'm going to do is turn the heat off, put the cover on it, let the uh, stuff steam. I'm going to see if my pasta's al softy yet. If it's al softy, I'll throw it in. I don't, eat, I don't eat al dente. If you do, God bless you. You want indigestion, you're welcome to it. And I repeat it until someone finally hears me out there. Have you ever seen a Chinese eat al dente rice? Answer is no. They cook rice till it's soft. Nobody eats raw rice unless you're a psychotic from the Lower East Side on magic mushrooms. Then you eat like raw rice and you wind up in the emergency room with too much TAC and THC. Okay, let me see now. Hold on. It's soft. It's ready to go into my dish. So here's what I'm going to do. Hold on. Mmm, it's delicious. I don't know about you. Pasta settles my stomach. Pardon me for not talking while I'm eating. I'm here to talk while I'm eating. What do you want me to do, not eat and talk? I love the people online. Why do you talk and eat? How do you do a cooking show without talking and eating at the same time? What are you, a stunats? 
you got to talk and eat. So now I'm going to take my food out, the most important part of it, with the great device, the pasta device. And the beauty of this device is I'm going to get it a little moist when she goes in there. And as you know, the pasta water is recommended by Italian chefs for adding some body with the starch. So I'll put in just the amount, really, that I want and drain the rest for tomorrow with an egg or something in the morning. It's a beautiful dish. This will be enough for two days anyway, you know, no matter what. I'll put a little bit more in because there's never enough pasta for me. All right, we got that going. Turn off the heat on the water so I don't burn the pot, my new pot. I got to drain that out while holding the phone, which is going to be very hard, even with the new top. Oh, what a challenge that's going to be. So I got to finish my dish and keep talking with you while draining my pasta. If it was a professional cooking show, I'd just leave it in the water and an assistant would drain it. Uh, let me figure out how to do this without burning myself. And I'm going to do that. I could do one-handed things. Very interesting. See, it's ready to go. Now I got to pick up the pot with two hands. And I have one hand on the phone. Oh, this, this is going to be a rough. This will be a rough passage now. This is, a, this is not good. This is asking for real trouble. So if you don't mind, here's what I'm going to do. I'm putting my phone here. Back. All right. Thanks, Billy. Take a look at this. You won't believe this. My phone got muted again, and that was Billy, my producer, calling from uh, somewhere north of Illinois, where Al Capone lived, to say you muted the phone when you put it down. It happened again. We went blank. See that? I got angry for no reason. This is the problem. It's very easy to misinterpret things in the world when you lose your temper. I didn't recognize his number. Okay, well, thank God I picked up and decided to curse him out. That was wrong, that's all. Now, the only question I have is, is this. Thanks for sticking with me, guys. Uh, let me reverse this. It was fun. Look at this dish. Now, you know what you pay for this in a restaurant? You can't get it. The quality of the seafood, the quality of the pasta, the quality of the oil, the quality of everything you can't buy. It's impossible. Okay, but I don't know if I want to eat that mild sauce. I have to taste it. Mmm, not bad, but not great. No, I have to go to the red sauce. Sorry. I really want to enjoy it. There are a few things I have to do. Okay. I just simply have to get a commercial red sauce and pour it on the dish. Not ruin it. I like Rayals. Even though I have others I use, but I like this a lot. I like when they were Rayals, now they're carnation, whatever. So beautiful. So why are you using a can sauce, a bottle sauce? I'm leaving you now. What do you expect me to do? Go out in the garden and pick tomatoes for you? You want me to, like, crush the grapes from the wine I drink, too? What's wrong with you people? You want me to crush the grapes to make the wine? I've made my own tomato sauce when the kids were young and when they were still, you know, the Halloween age. It's a pain in the ass, truthfully, with the tomatoes from Italy and the, the, the San Romano and Marzano. I made my own sauce. There's no need to. There are commercial sauces today that are so good. An emergency like this. See, this is going to be good. I admit it. Look, I'm a, I could call it, you know, chef cooking or this and that. I'm not a professional chef. I'm not trying to be. There are people who know a lot more than I do about cooking. And I do love watching them. I don't like a lot of their ingredients. I, I don't go for the butter, the cream, the dairy. They're cooking from another era where there was no knowledge of, of health and nutrition. There's no need to cook like that. You know, I like Jacques Pepin, but I say it's a personality. His cooking sucks. It's heart attack food. It's from the Julie Child era. Everything butter, cream. He said, I'll put in a pinch of salt. It's a half a container. No, sorry. From another time. Another time. I don't eat like that. So there's a way to cook in a modified way where you can enjoy your food and less salt. No butter, no cream, no dairy. There's no need for that. Sure, it makes the food taste good if you like that. But I don't happen to like butter, cream, and dairy on anything. If you do, God bless you, throw it on. Okay, my food is basically going to be done. I'm turning the heat off. 
putting a top on it, but the most important thing is about to happen, and you know what that is. Assuming I'm still being heard, can you hear me now again? I'm not sure. I have the cheese. I'm going to finish this bottle, pardon me. I drank a half a bottle last night. Let me tell you about my wine drinking. People ask. Okay, this is an important part of my show, which I've not done. This is a uh, pure Sauvignon Blanc. It's not my favorite, but it's pretty damn good. It's pretty cheap. It's like 18 bucks a bottle. It's as good as you're ever going to get for the money. Okay, so in 09, I had an incident. They call it an incident known as a heart attack. You're not allowed to say heart attack. You say, oh, so what the hell do you know what you're doing? Oh, I was 78 years old at the time. My poor dad died at 57, grandfather at 49. I, I feared dying of a heart attack my whole life, right? And I was a cardiac neurotic, so I watched my diet forever. And then I had the heart attack. It happened, finally. Thank God it wasn't fatal and it wasn't the widow maker. I'm going to do a show one day on heart attack survivors because I've talked to other friends and no one talks to them about how, how, how they're living after a heart attack. Nobody will discuss it. Their fears at night of dying. No one talks about post-heart attack. And a lot of young people are getting heart attack. So to make a long story short, I modified my diet. I was never a big meat eater for the previous 30 years. I mean, I ate a lot of Chinese trash, I'll be honest. And I knew I was, you know, occluding the arteries. I knew enough about that from my studies to eat that, that, that garbage. But, you know, I had to fuel myself up to do my shows and to keep my energy up. And then it happened. So after the uh, event, we call it an event now, I um, talked to my cardiologist who's since retired. Nice guy. So I said, Mark, um, I'd like to keep drinking my wine. He said, no, you can have two glasses a day at, at one time. <laughs> So was my friend who had a heart attack years ago called me, Larry, and he said, you still drink? I said, what do you mean I still drink? Are you kidding me? Without wine, I'd be dead altogether. Hold on. The thing is this. Here's the thing to remember. If I drink my two glasses of wine at night, which I try to do every night, sometimes I'll have one vodka, sometimes I'll have two wines, my two ounces. For those... Two, three hours, I don't fear dying. I don't think about mortality. The other 20, I suffer with fear of instant death. That's all. So I figure I'll take it. You know, whatever the, the balance point is, I'll take my wine. I get inebriated for an hour or two. I enjoy myself. And that's the end of it. And, you know, that's my post-cardiac uh, relationship. I mean, I drink two glasses of wine at night. Come winter, I'll drink red wine. When it turns cold, I'm going to go to my Barolos, my Bordeaux's. Summer, I can't. Now I drink stainless steel aged white wine, which has very low mal malolactic uh, fermentation in it. You drink the barrel fermented stuff, the oak barrels. I mean, that's where the headaches are coming from, by and large. Okay. Well, we had a wonderful evening together so far, you and my audience. And Billy, thank you for calling. And telling me the sound died. I guess when I put the phone down, I touched the mute button like I did last week and I had to dump the whole uh, show. So I only lost a few minutes here screaming about the phone. So let me show you the finished dish before I turn the phone off and we get all the post coverage of the Trump rally, which, what am I to listen to? I listen to newscasters telling me what I heard? <laughs> I saw the rally. I mean, he said the same stuff he's always said, and it was beautiful in Madison Square Garden. Now, tomorrow, of course, you'll see the Nazi banners and the superimposed Hitler pictures on the psychopaths' web websites. They got them ready to go. The uh, Hitler, Holocaust survivor, 94, survived the death camps, was furious. Jews were in there screaming for him. Orthodox Jews loved the guy. The Jews who run this administration hate the guy. Oh, yeah, big, big difference. The really religious Jews love Trump, and the fake Jews, the ones who haven't really been in a synagogue in years, and when they go in, they don't know why they're, they're there. Shall I name them in the uh, Trump administration? You want to hear them? You need to hear their names? You don't need to hear their names. It's sickening. Look, I told you before, I've studied enough history going back to ancient times. 
to tell you that when Jesus was crucified by the Romans, before he was crucified, there was a judgment by the Sanhedrin, the Jewish judges, they were all lawyers, of course. I think there were 24 in the Sanhedrin, and they were voting whether to kill, uh, hang, uh, I'm a central, whether, <laughs> whether to crucify Jesus. Not a funny topic. I said I almost killed Trump. And um, the majority said, yes, hang, hang him. He's a renegade. He's a rebel. But there were a, major, a minority, like 30% of the rabbis said, no, don't crucify Jesus. You never hear about them. So these are the Jews who love Donald Trump who said, don't crucify Jesus, they're the descendants. They're the real McCoy. The others are the fakers. The uh, guy who runs DHS, the guy who runs Justice Department, hold on. You think they believe in God? They believe in power, naked power. Mm. It's not bad. All right, my friends, let's drink to life. Let's drink to life and to vanquishing the enemy within. Thank you, Donald Trump. I don't need the credit. Give the credit to Cicero, where credit is due. Book was published in 2003 by yours truly. I was going to add a little red pepper to his dish. And I'll probably use some Romano cheese which is goat cheese, it's delicious, ground up. Oh, good, I'm gonna have a great meal. I'm gonna watch a little of the replay of the Trump rally. Watch a movie, go to sleep, God willing. I'll wake up to tomorrow. Mmm, got to tell you something, I mean. I began today with a great God talk called Halloween is Bigger Than Christmas. I just says, I'm doing a lot of work lately, I like it. I enjoy it enormously. I love focusing on my audience. You've been so loyal to me. And one day the clock stops, kids, for all of us, you know. Nobody lives forever, so I appreciate your being here for me, and I love that you still hang in there for me. I mean, it's not an audience on the size of some. I mean, I understand that. But whatever audience I have is my lifeblood right now, still talking with you, Still reaching you. Many of you notice my voice has not changed in 30 years. It's the same voice. The day I hear that I get a little enfeebled, I'm out. I'm out. But the voice is still strong. The mind is still sharp. Uh, it's good. Life is good. Life is good. And eating well is the best. <laughs> it's the best revenge, I got to tell you. You know, I'm sure if I could sit down and cook one meal for some of these left-wing fanatics in the government, they'd actually change their mind and vote for Trump. Some of them would leave the administration <laughs> gladly because they know who she is and who Biden is and who's behind them. All right, if you like what you see tonight, I thank you very much for listening. That's good enough for me. My podcasts are found wherever great podcasts are found. So it's not on the level of Joe Rogan, okay, but it's still considered by my ad agency in the top 10 of their 3,000 shows. Is that bad? No, it's not bad. It's very good. And my YouTube shows, let's say it's 30, 40,000 over time. So that's bad. It's not 8 million, but it's 40,000 of you. That's good. And my God Talks, 20,000. Is that bad? That's a stadium full of people. So if I get 20,000 people watching a YouTube video... And Mr. Trump just had 20,000 in Madison. Try to envision that I'm reaching about the size of the audience that Trump just had in Madison Square Garden. And that's good. And God is good. And America is great. And you are great. And thank you very much for sharing this with 10 friends. And now I will say, look what you're missing. That's for me and it's nice. Billy, I'd give it to you if I could, but you're in Pennsylvania. 